It's been four years since the last iPhone SE model came out. We're talking 2016. It's also been seven weeks since I've had a haircut now, uh, and you know it's really starting to show. You know, at, at the rate that my hairline's going, though, I might not need one much longer. <laughs> but all of that to say, it's an exciting day today, talking about April 24th, 2020, because we have the brand new iPhone SE 2020 model. And not only do we have, whoops, it's upside down, we have the red one, I also happen to have the white one. So we're going to do a dual unboxing of these two new uh, spicy Apple boys, and we're gonna see what they look like, talk about the specs a little bit, and yeah, we'll see what, see what these things are all about. So before we get into the unboxing, I do want to say if this is your first time stopping by the channel, I appreciate you being here. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell down at the bottom so you can get updates on the latest videos. Now, take these out of the box. You know, I think the most disappointing part of this whole unboxing process is that Apple includes this little pull tab. So I thought I was gonna to get to use my handy dandy unboxing knife, but apparently all that we need to do is take the plastic off of here. And there you go. So that was less exciting than, than you know, I had kind of hoped for. But either way, starting off with the white iPhone SE 2020 edition, go ahead and take the box off take out the documentation, have a look and see what's in here. Of course, I've done this tons and tons of times, but here we are, we've got the documentation that absolutely nobody reads. Then we have the I, well, the Apple stickers, if you wanna put those on something. And then here we are with the iPhone itself. So I couldn't decide which color I wanted. I went ahead and I ordered the white one and the red one. I don't really care about the black one, but the white one looked really interesting to me. It looks like it has the brushed aluminum sides and then of course the white, the glass back, the single camera you can see back there, and then of course the lightning charging port on the bottom. One important change to note is that they did move the Apple logo down further to center it on the phone just like the rest of the devices. Still have your mute switch, you got your volume up and volume down buttons on the left hand side, power button on the right side. Let's go ahead and fire it up. And ta-da, we have the Apple logo, so we are cooking with gas. Now that that's turning on on the side, we'll take a look and see what else is in here. We've got the ear pods with the lightning charging port uh, connector on the bottom, which is what enables you to plug it in. You've got the standard five watt charger, which is slow as molasses, but since the phone does have such a small battery on it, it doesn't really take that long, honestly. And then we have our lightning charging cable, so you can get yourself charged up whenever you're ready to. And saving the best for last, we have the red edition now. And you can see with the insert here, it does say that a portion of the proceeds do go to uh, AIDS uh, relief and all that good stuff. Well, that's actually uh, for the new SE model that's incorrect. It's for the COVID-19 relief. So really cool that they're doing that and still you know, using the red edition to further a cause. Let's go ahead and take the plastic off of this one. Yeah, I totally love the product red edition and it's dragged me in pretty much every time since it's come out, uh, starting with, I believe, the original iPhone 8, and I totally love the iPhone 8. So as soon as I found out they were putting this back in the iPhone 8 housing, I was all about it. Uh, you've got the camera on the back there still. Just taking a closer look at this one so you can see what the red one looks like as opposed to the white one. It's interesting, they both do have the black face on the front instead of the uh, old school white one. So that's a nice thing that's going on as well. And you can see they, they both look really sharp. I mean, the white one looks unique, uh, a little on the plain side, but I think I've seen mostly people have been picking up this red one. And they look so good, especially when you put them next to each other. And by no stretch of the imagination am I the biggest Apple fan in the world. I do enjoy their products, but I just think that this is a sleek looking phone. And a lot of people have been downplaying it. You know, like, oh, it's a 399 iPhone, blah, 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 all that stuff. But this will get the job done. You have the latest and greatest flagship processor in it. They bumped up uh, the RAM to three gigabytes in this one. You still have 64 gigabytes of baseline storage. You've got the 12 megapixel camera. It's got everything that you could possibly need. And then they brought back Touch ID. So instead of having the, you know, the Face ID on the iPhone 10 series and newer, this one, good old home button, good old fingerprint sensor. So if you've been waiting 
for another version of this. You're in luck because they've got it. You don't have to settle because you've got the latest and greatest specs. And it may not have the two or three camera setup that the iPhone 11 or the Pro and the Pro Max have, but this right here will do you more than you could possibly need. It's a solid, workhorse, budget-oriented, great phone for so many people. Now, yeah, it's got the bezels on it, which is really not that big of a deal if you don't care about it. I mean, it doesn't bother me, so I don't see why it bothers a lot of other people. This is just a really nice phone, and you're not having to settle. So you shouldn't feel like you're being ripped off or being shortchanged because it does so much. And then it gets you into the ecosphere so you can get your Apple card, you can uh, do all your other stuff like Apple TV and iTunes and Apple Pay. It, it's just so many nice things. And here, taking a look at them outside in the sun, both of these are really, really sharp options that you can't possibly go wrong with at this price point. I, I don't know of anything really in the Android world that's going to compete with this at the $399 point, except for maybe you know the Pixel 4a if it happens to come out sometime in the near future. But still, even this is going to be more powerful, more streamlined, and of course you get iOS 13. Now I'll go ahead and take some pictures real quick so you can get a look and see what the selfie camera uh, looks like on the front. I will do a more in-depth review on the phone and take a look at it, but as you can see here, the camera is quite capable and it takes some pretty good shots. I mean, you get some contrast, different colored hairs in the beard there, and overall, I'm pretty happy with the uh, image quality. All right, so that's all I have on my unboxing video and first impressions of these brand new iPhone SEs, the 2020 edition. So, really cool. And yeah, I think a lot of people are kind of curious about what the excitement is behind these devices. And just my own you know, food for thought to, to pass on, yeah, it's really, I think kind of an exciting moment because what we have here is an iPhone that's $399. Now, yes, we had the iPhone SE before. This is a little bit different. That was the old body style. We're talking a four inch screen. It was a really small phone. It really, it, it did what it was supposed to, but there's so much that has happened in the last four years. And it's great because now you can get access to it on this brand new iPhone with the 4.7 inch screen. You've got the Apple credit card, if that's something you're interested in. You've got uh, Apple TV, which is really cool. And, and you get a full free year with this. So you're talking a 399 phone. You already go ahead and discount the year service off of that. Um, you've got iTunes. You've got the App Store. You've got the ever so wonderful iMessage. So there's a lot of really interesting stuff that you get. It's not just, oh, it's just a small iPhone. Well, it's a small iPhone that opens you up into the bigger iPhone world. And now you can do it at a price that you don't have to break the piggy bank. You don't have to worry about forking out a thousand, eleven hundred dollars, or even seven hundred dollars if you want to get the cheaper iPhone 11. Yeah, there's older models, but you know, people want the new one. And there's a lot of people that really like Touch ID and you know they've been stuck with the option of, well, do I ditch my iPhone 7 or my iPhone 8 and move over to the iPhone 10 or the 11 or the 11 Pro series? This right here allows people to still hold on to what they enjoy in a smaller form factor because not everyone wants a gigantic screen and it gives you everything that you need plus the A13 Bionic chip, which is just crazy powerful in this little package. So you're guaranteed that this is gonna be good for at least four years. So. A lot of cool stuff. If you're excited about it, be happy about it. If you're interested in one, let me know in the comments what you think and if you're gonna get one. And don't listen to anyone else. Enjoy what you enjoy. Be happy with what you wanna be happy about. And this phone right here, I think is the bee's knees. I totally love the iPhone 8. Glad they came out with this. I'm interested to see what it can do now with this new chip, see if the battery life's improved at all. And we're gonna test it out. So that's all I've got. Thank you for stopping in for my unboxing and first impressions of the new iPhone SE 2020 edition. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section. I'll get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.